Now, on this program, we've brought you multiple updates and guests to analyze that battle over Wisconsin's legislative maps. Instead of having the liberal majority state Supreme Court redraw the maps, Governor Tony Evers today signing into law maps that he drew and the Republican-controlled legislature voted to approve last week. However, only two Democrats voted to approve, leading to some speculation the governor might back out of his promise to sign the maps into law. But he did not, as he maintains these maps give each party a fair shake at winning control of the legislature. To me, the decision to enact these maps boils down to this. I made a promise to the people of Wisconsin that I would always try to do the right thing. And keeping that promise to me matters most, even if members of my own party disagree with me. Folks, that's what having fair maps means. It means elected officials actually have to listen and do what's best, not for their own political party, but for the people who elect them. Well, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss responding to the governor's signing today, calling the maps the most Republican leaning of all maps being considered by the court, saying, quote, this fall, Republicans will prove that we can win on any maps because we have the better policy ideas for the state of Wisconsin, end quote. Now, the maps passed today would not go into effect until the November election, but Governor Evers has asked the state Supreme Court to clarify that these maps signed today will be in effect for any special elections prior to the November election. Under the new maps, there would be 15 incumbents in the assembly who would be forced to run against another an incumbent rather and six such pairings in the Senate. You see them there. Only one of the assembly pairings would pit a Democratic incumbent against another Democrat in the Senate. Only the only Democratic pairing includes an incumbent who has already decided not to run this fall. All right, our political reporter Jason Zimmerman joining me now after talking to some in our area who are going to be affected. And the obvious one, Jason, when you look at the new Senate districts, is that we have three current Republican state senators that would now all be in the same district. Yeah, Chris, I think that's one of the biggest changes with the redrawing of these maps. And I, I spoke to uh, Senator Eric Wimberger this afternoon about some of this. It's his district where he'll now be joined with two other mm -hmm. uh, colleagues in the state Senate that are being moved in his district. This will be Senator Rob Coles mm -hmm. and Senator Andre Jacques. And what he's telling me is he thinks this was intentional, an intentional move to try to, to uh, limit the control Republicans have right now with their supermajority in the state Senate. But he tells me this afternoon that he is definitely going to run. But this creates an interesting situation because the two other candidates who live now in his district right. would have to either challenge him in the primary. Uh, that would be the decision that Rob Coles would have to make because Rob is also up for election this, this fall. year, yep. this fall. Now, Andre Jacques, a little bit different scenario. He was just reelected two years ago. He has the option now to uh, serve out the remainder of his term. Now if, he does, now, if he wants to do that, though, he would have to move to his existing district where he was elected in two years ago. He would have 30 days to do that once they were to go back in the session in January. We haven't heard yet from uh, Senator Coles or Senator Andre Jacques on what they plan to do, but it is interesting here that uh, Andre Jacques is exploring a potential run for Congress right now. I spoke to him about that this past weekend, so that could be on his agenda right now if he does not want to move his family um, out of De Pere, where he lives sure. right now, and over to the new district uh, so he could be within those boundaries. All right, interesting to note also that of the three, two of them, Mr. Winberger and Mr. Jacques, voted against these maps. Robert exactly. Coles did approve with the majority of Republicans yeah. there. The maps also create a new Senate district, Jason, down in Appleton. Why, what do Democrats think they can do there? That's also an interesting concept right there with that new district they've created. It's a, it's a thin little district. It runs along the shoreline of Lake Winnebago, stretching from the city of Appleton down to Oshkosh. So that particular district eliminates a lot of rural voters and, and puts a lot of urban voters on the map, which I think Democrats believe will vote more Democrat. I believe they think this is a winnable seat. Now, before the margin in that area, uh, which has been dominated by Republicans, was you know upwards of uh, plus 16. I spoke to the only candidate so far this afternoon that has um, put in a bid for that seat, uh, Appleton City Council member Christine, Kristen Elfheim. Now, she tells me that uh, she believes she has a good chance under this new map because the district is going to be much more competitive within five points. And that can go either way because it always comes down to independent voters at that, uh, at that level, which usually make up about 10% of the voting public one way or the other. So that'll be interesting. Democrats think that might be the one pickup they can get in the okay. Fox Valley right now dominated 
by Republicans in the state Senate. All right, in the assembly, we mentioned that there will be a bunch of pairs that will go against each other. What about for our area? How many Republican pairs will, will wind up being in the same district? There's quite a few in our area, you know, between Green Bay and the Fox Valley. And I refer to my sheet that uh, was politics put out here. And I know in our area, one, one to mention is John Mako, who will be put on the ballot with Shane Sortwell. Uh, that's going to be one contested race. And we also have Ty Bowden out of Hilbert. He's going to face off against Ron Tussler. There's uh, Ty Bowden, uh, like, well, just mentioned that one. Elijah Benke of Oconto against David Steffen. Also, Nate Gustafson in Fox Crossing against Michael Schraw of Oshkosh. Those are just a few right mm -hmm. now of the contested racers that voters could see within these new districts in the state assembly. Again, in our area, it's all Republicans against right. Republicans that will have to. Uh, and they all approved. Yeah, all approved and they all new approved changes. this, and yeah. some of them will be moving into different districts. Yeah. That's the thing, and facing a different set of voters depending on right. where they run right now. So it won't be the same voters either. It'll be different people, possibly different communities that they'll have to go and campaign in, and potentially for the first time. All right, well, after all the talking, it is now law. Jason will have more on this coming yeah. up tonight at 5 o'clock. Still to come here at 4.30, your first